Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Lord, that we are able to study this book, the book of Daniel. Lord, we know that there are so many um, precious truths in this book, and we know that you have called us to study this book. I pray that you would be with us now as we dive into the book of Daniel, as we study. Please grant us the wisdom and understanding that we need. Take control of our hearts and minds. I pray that you would send the Holy Spirit to be here to guide us into all truth. And I pray for each person here that you would speak to their hearts. Be with me as I teach, be with my words, and I pray that this class will be a blessing. I thank you so much, Lord, for hearing and for answering our prayers, and I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we are going to go right into it. Okay, so let us begin with the author and title of the book of Daniel. Now, the book of Daniel was named after and written by Daniel in the 6th century BC, BC. Okay, so about 600 BC. And this book actually records the events of his life and also the visions that he saw from the time of his, of his exile in 605 BC. And you can actually find this in Daniel chapter 1, verse 1, when Daniel was taken from Jerusalem, okay, that was around 605 BC. And it covers the time span till the third year of King Cyrus. And you can find this in Daniel chapter 10 and verse 1. So by the, um, in the third year of King Cyrus was around the time 536 BC. So the time period for the book of Daniel is actually from the 605 BC all the way till 536 BC. Okay. And as you can see in the slide there, Daniel, his name means God is my judge. Okay, the Dan is judge and L is God. So when you put that together, it says God is my judge. So just from his name itself, you know, uh, you, you have an idea of what the book of Daniel is about. It's talking about judgment. Okay, judgments from God. Now, Daniel was a young man of noble blood, okay, as we will see in Daniel chapter 1 later on, he was of royalty, okay, and Daniel was exiled from Judah during the time of King Jehoiakim, okay, there was the king that was reigning during that time, and Daniel was brought to Babylon from Jerusalem, and Daniel, when he was in Babylon, he actually served during the reign of Babylon and also the reign of Medo-Persia, okay, so from the start, from um, he actually reigned during two kingdoms, Babylon and also Medo-Persia. Okay. Now let's go to the date. The date. Um, this book is dated from 605 to 536 BC. Okay. Now both Jewish and Christian tradition have held that the author of the book, which is Daniel, lived during the sixth century BC during the time of the Babylonian exile. Okay, so around 605 BC. Now, many of the chapters of this book are dated and range, like uh, as we, as I mentioned, from the first year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, which is 605 BC, to Cyrus's third year, 536 BC. Now, when we think about the book of Daniel, some have doubted the dates that are actually found in this book. Okay, why? Why do they doubt? It's because the dates in Daniel are so accurate. And the book of Daniel actually um, <clears throat> predicts future events, um, specific events, accurately. Okay? It gives specific events and also specific dates. And, you know, people question that. They, they, they use that as a reason to say that, you know, because it's so specific, it's so direct, it, 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 it's so, you know, it has specific dates and events, it cannot be true. It's just too much of a coincidence to be true. But friends, that is actually even greater evidence that the book of Daniel is true because it is inspired from God. Okay? If you actually study the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 25, 11, okay, actually gives us um, specific time prophecy in regards to the book of Daniel. 
Okay, it talks about how um, the Jews will be in Babylon for 70 years. Okay, so when it comes to prophecy, especially in the book of Daniel, there are specific dates, specific timelines, specific events. And this just shows that the book of Daniel and the Bible as a whole can be trusted because it can predict future events and also give us specific dates. Okay. Now, when we talk about um, specific events and dates as well, um, you know, the specific, um, the sp uh, specific dates and events in Daniel's prophecies serves its purpose. Okay. How? Because it shows carefully how God has planned events. Okay. It shows us how God has governed, um, governed those events and bring them to perfect ends. Therefore, the faithful people, God's faithful people, can recognize that none of their troubles are taken by God by surprise. Okay, God is not surprised by things that happen. Okay, and nothing will actually derail the purpose of God in vindicating those who are faithful to God. Okay, so in, in the case of Daniel, Daniel was faithful to God, and because of that, he vindicated God. Okay. And this is actually very relevant to, to us, to God's people, especially living in these last days, okay? Because we are living um, at a time when, you know, if you look in the world, you know, signs are fast fulfilling. We know that Jesus is coming soon. And actually, many when we study the book of Daniel, we will see many parallels to our time and the things that are taking place in our day today. So the book of Daniel is very, very relevant to us, God's people who are living in the last days. Okay, so once again, the date for the book of Daniel is around 605 to 536 BC. All right, now we look at the theme of Daniel. Okay, now the central theme of the book of Daniel is the setting up and removing of kings as God pleases. Okay, so God sets up kings and he removes them. This is the central theme of the book of Daniel. Now let's go to a few Bible verses here. Let's go to Daniel chapter 2 and verse 21. Okay, Daniel 2, 21, the Bible says this, And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding okay so here in Daniel chapter 2 we see this theme come up God sets up kings and he removes them okay and let me give you an example of when that happened let's go to Daniel chapter 4 verses 34 to 37 the Bible says this and at the end of the days I Nebuchadnezzar lifted up mine eyes unto heaven and my understanding returned unto me and I bless the Most High, and I praise and honor him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are repeated as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my lords sought unto me. And I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to obey. Okay, so Daniel chapter 4, this is where King Nebuchadnezzar, his kingdom was taken from him. Okay, and we will study this in the future. He actually, um, because of his pride, he loses the king, his kingdom, which is Babylon. Okay, so God can set up kings. He can remove them as he pleases because God is in control. Okay, and you know, all the kingdoms of this world will eventually come to an end. It will be replaced by God's kingdom, okay? And God's kingdom is one that will never pass. It will stand forever. And one more thing we see in the book of Daniel 
is though trials and difficulties will come, they will continue for God's people who are faithful until the end. Those who are faithful will be raised to glory. Okay, they will receive honor and they will receive everlasting life in the final kingdom. Okay, so those who are faithful, even though they are persecuted, even though they are uh, faced with trials, they will reap the reward, which is they will inherit God's kingdom. Okay, so that is the theme of the book of Daniel. God sets up kings and he removes them as he pleases. All right. Now, let's look at some key themes um, in this book as well. Some key themes. It is possible to, lead, to live a faithful life in exile. Okay. Now, Daniel and his friends were surrounded by pagan influences and propaganda. And it shows us that if, one's, if one, uh, someone is, has his mind or his or her mind set um, on serving the Lord wholeheartedly and being faithful, they can survive. Better yet, they can thrive and they can succeed if they are only faithful to God. And this is shown by the life of Daniel and his three friends. Okay. Number two, God can vindicate his faithful servants in front of pagan rulers. Okay. How? By giving them unusual wisdom and insight into divine mysteries and by miraculously protecting them against the enmity of their pagan neighbors. Okay, so God can vindicate his faithful servants. He can give them wisdom, skill, and understanding to, um, to, pre uh, to preserve them in that situation, in whatever trials that they will face. All right, number three, God humbles the proud and he raises up the humble. Okay, even the hearts of the greatest kings are under his control. So this book teaches us that if you are proud, if you are filled with pride, God will bring you down. And when you are humble, you realize that you are nothing without God. God will raise you up. He will exalt you. Okay. Next, this world will be a place of torment and persecution for the saints until the end. And this will only get worse and worse rather than better and better. And that's just the reality of the sinful world that we live in. Yet, God will judge the kingdoms of this world and he will bring them to an end. And he will replace the kingdoms of this world with his own kingdom. And God's kingdom is one that will never end. Okay. And who is ruling God's kingdom? Of course, it is Jesus. Right? He is the king of kings. He is the one that is ruling in this kingdom. And soon he will come to take his faithful people to inherit his kingdom. Okay. Number five, God is sovereign over the course of history, even over those who rebel against him and seek to destroy his people. So God is in control no matter what people try to do, no matter how people try to change the course, um, God is in control and no one can change his purpose. No one can change his plans. Okay, God is the most powerful one and he is in control. And number six, the exile was not the end of hi Israel history of rebellion and judgment. Now in the future, okay, we will see that Israel would again transgress against the Lord. And Jerusalem would be handed over into the power of her enemies. Okay, so even though um, God's people were in exile now, once they came out of that, they were still unfaithful. Okay, and God still had to give them into the hands of their enemies. Okay, and um, we see this in, in the future, right? When the Romans came and they destroyed the temple, as uh, spoken by Jesus in the book of Matthew. Okay, but eventually God's um, the anointed ruler, which is Jesus, would come and deliver, deliver God's people from her sins. Okay, so even though um, God's people are given into um, the hands of their enemies, eventually God will save them from their sins and will deliver them. Okay, and next is 
these earthly events are mirrors of a great cosmic conflict in the heavenly realms between angelic forces of good and evil. Okay, so there's a great controversy happening, right? There's forces of evil and forces of good that are battling against each other. And this is very um, prevalent in the book of Daniel. Another thing is prayer is a significant weapon in that conflict. So we will see this subject of prayer being brought up many times. Okay, in, in, in the effort to fight against the forces of evil, we will see the topic of prayer. And number eight, God rules over all these conflicts and events. Okay, he limits their scope and he has a precise timetable for the trials of the saints to be completed. And there's coming a, there is a time coming when God will finally intervene to cleanse and deliver his people. And lastly, um, in the meantime, the saints must be patient and faithful amid a hostile world, looking to the Lord alone for deliverance. So while everything is going on, okay, uh, trials, difficulties, uh, persecution, God's people are called to be faithful. And this example was shown by Daniel and his friends. Okay, so we looked at the central theme. We also look at some um, sub-themes or key themes that we can find in the book of Daniel. Okay, and as we study, as we go through chapter by chapter, we will see this clearly brought out. All right. Now we are going to look, oops, sorry. We are going to look next at some distinctive features of the book of Daniel or in studying the book of Daniel. Okay. So this book, the book of Daniel contains essential messages, especially for the last generation. As we study the book of Daniel, we will see the present and future events in history. We'll also see the prophecy fulfilled. Full prophecy fulfilled, fulfilling, and also prophecy that will be fulfilled in the future. And before we actually get into um, the book, um, we will also look at some tools that will be helpful throughout our studies. Okay, so as we use these tools, it will help us to gain a better understanding of the book of Daniel. And the right tools, friends, when we are studying the Bible, when we use the right tools, it can prove to be most effective okay i want to read you um, a quote here from the review and herald november 10 1896 um the ellen white says this as a people and as individuals we need to have a deeper sense of our duty to god and our responsibility to the world there should be more earnest study of the scriptures I have been deeply impressed with the importance of studying the book of Daniel in connection with the smaller prophets, especially Malachi. And we need to give careful attention also to the lessons taught in the building of the tabernacle and the temple and in the temple service. Through the prophets, God has given a delineation of what will come to pass in the last days of this earth's history. And the Jewish economy is full of instruction for us. Okay, so Alan White tells us that we need to study the book of Daniel. We need to be acquainted with um, the sanctuary, with the temple, with its services. We need to know um, what is the relevance of, um, you know, the temple, the sanctuary to our lives so that we can be prepared for the last days. We can be prepared for the coming of Jesus. Okay, let me read to you another one. Sorry, once again. Um, Review and Herald, February 4, 1902. In the night season, I was in my dreams in a large meeting with ministers, their wives, and their children. I wondered that the company present was mostly made up of ministers and their families. The prophecy of Malachi was brought before them in connection with Daniel, Zephaniah, Haggai, and Zechariah. The teaching of these books was carefully investigated. The building of the temple and the temple service were considered. There was close searching of the scriptures in regard to the sacred character of all that pertained to the temple service. 
Through the prophets, God has given a delineation of what will come to pass in the last days of this earth's history, and the Jewish economy is full of instruction for us. So it's pretty similar to the previous quote, right? Um, but once again, she's saying that, um, you know, the ministers, right? The ministers, the families, they need to study um, the prophecies in the book of Daniel. Yes, all the prophets, uh, other prophets as well, like Malachi, Zephaniah, Haggai, but especially the book of Daniel. Okay, so we need to take time to study this book. Okay, one more. In Testimonies to Ministers, page 112. The light that Daniel received from God was given especially for these last days. The visions he saw by the banks of the Ulai and the Hidekel, the great rivers of Shinar, are now in process of fulfillment, and all the events foretold will soon come to pass. Okay, so it's for those that are living in the last days. And who are those people that are living in the last days? It's us. So more than ever, we need to study the book of Daniel. We need to be acquainted with his prophecies. We need uh, to study the book of Daniel so that we can be prepared. Um, we can be uh, aware of what is taking place, what is going to happen. We can, be, um, we can be a light to others as well. We can warn them. We can prepare not only ourselves, but others for the coming of Jesus. Okay? Now, I'm going to bring you to a Bible verse here. In Matthew 24, verse 14 and 15. Okay, Matthew 24, verse 14 and 15, um, the Bible says this, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Verse 15, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Now Jesus is speaking here, and he's speaking to his disciples, and he's telling them to study the book of Daniel so that they can understand this prophecy. Okay, and you see that, that phrase there, whoso readeth, okay? That phrase, whoso readeth, is referring to whoever is searching for the true meaning of the Bible. Okay, so those who are seeking to understand what God has for them in the future, those who have a clear purpose uh, in studying the Bible, those who have a desire for truth, these people will understand. God will help them to understand. And this is a similar um, similar um, statement that we find in the book of Revelation. Okay, so Revelation chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says this, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. See, there's a blessing to those who read, to those who hear, and to those who keep the words of the prophecy, the books that are found in the Bible. So then, you know, we should read, we should hear, we should keep the things that are written in the Bible, especially the books of Daniel and Revelation. And you see, many people will tell you, many people will say, that we're not supposed to understand Daniel and Revelation. They say it's too mystical. They say there's, that there are so many symbols and it's just too hard to understand. But Jesus recommends the book of Daniel. He tells us to study the book of Daniel. And if we do study the book of Daniel, there is a blessing waiting for us. Okay, so let him understand. Okay, the, Jesus says, Whoso readeth, let him understand. There's a special meaning behind this phrase. Okay, let him understand. Let's go to um, Revelation 2 and 29. Okay, Re Revelation chapter 2, uh, 29. The Bible says this, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. This is, kind, this is same as he that readeth, let him understand. Now, is it unusual for someone to have an ear? No, it's pretty common, right? As human beings, we all have ears. Everyone has an ear and everyone should understand what the Spirit has to say. But does everyone understand spiritual things? Sadly, no. Why? 
because we lack that spiritual discernment that comes from the Holy Spirit. And we need that spiritual discernment if we want to understand spiritual things. Okay, So God wants those who are searching after spiritual understanding. And this is why He puts the book of Daniel and Revelation as if it is hidden. Because He wants to reveal those things only to those who are searching for it. And this is a crucial um, condition to understanding the books of Daniel and Revelation. Jesus makes it clear, for those who will read, they will understand. Those who will search, they will find. Okay, Those who read, hear, and keep will receive a blessing. And those who have understanding will be able to grasp the full message of this book. So we need to have an ear to hear what God is saying. We need to ask God for the Holy Spirit to give us spiritual discernment so we can understand the book of Daniel. Okay, let's also go to Matthew 13 verse 9. The Bible says, Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. This is the same as in Revelation. Okay, now when Jesus was speaking these words, what was he referring to? Okay, now he was referring to the context of Matthew 13 is Jesus just gave them a parable. Okay, and he's telling them, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now this contains um, a lot of symbolic terminology. Jesus is saying here that if you are really searching for spiritual discernment, you will understand, you will be able to hear what he is saying. And this is the preparation that we need as we study this book, the book of Daniel. Okay, let's go to one more Bible text here. Matthew thirteen thirty four. Okay, same chapter, verse 34. It says, All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. Now, why did Jesus speak in parables? Okay, why did he have to speak in parables? Number one, he needed to protect the truth from those, from the people he is rebuking. Okay, so in this context, it was the scribes and the Pharisees. Okay, and he needed to protect the truth from those people. The books of da Daniel and also Revelation are full of symbols because God wants to protect his truth from his enemies. He wants to protect his truth from those who will mis misuse it, from those who will use it for their agenda. So God needs to protect, number one, God needs to protect his truth from his enemies. Number two, it's because it's easy to remember and understand. You see, if we have spiritual discernment and we know the meaning behind it, it will be easy for us to understand. Without spiritual discernment, of course, we will not understand. So we need to ask once again for a spiritual discernment from God. We need to ask for the Holy Spirit so we can truly understand the meaning um, of the book of Daniel. We can uncover, we can unlock um, the mysteries in this book. And with the Holy Spirit's help, it will become easy for us to understand. Okay. Now let's go to um, the next one, which is... What is the problem of Daniel and Revelation? Okay, now Daniel and Revelation, they are easy to understand if we have spiritual discernment. It's easy to understand if we have the right tools to unlock the mysteries. And you see, we can have confidence in reading Daniel and Revelation, but only if we um, come to the book of Daniel with a sincere desire to arrive at truth. Only if we realize that on our own we cannot understand this book and we ask for the Holy Spirit, we ask for help, we ask for spiritual discernment, then God will truly make it easy for us. And the thing is, some people object. Some people say that we cannot be sure how to understand these books. People will say, how can you be sure you're right? You see, why can't people understand these books? It's because they don't have the desire to search them or they don't have the spiritual discernment. Okay? And like we, we saw this just now. 
Ellen White says if we study these books rightly, we would have spiritual revival in our church. We would be prepared for the last days. We would be given instruction in regards to the future. So are studying the books of Daniel and Revelation important for us? Yes. Right? Studying these books are vitally important for our churches. Okay, and so once again, I want to encourage you, um, if you um, are studying this book for the first time and you, your church has not studied this book in detail or verse by verse, I want to encourage you um, after this class with your notes and with your commentary, go and teach. Even if it's just a few people, even if it's just a small group, teach this book, teach the things that you have learned and revival will happen in our churches. Okay, we have the responsibility of giving the right interpretation of these books to God's people, to our churches. But first, we need to understand, we need to um, be able to discover for ourselves what the book is telling us, the true meaning behind this book. And only then can we teach and can we share. Okay, now let's look at the overview of the book of Daniel okay um, the big picture of this book now Daniel has 12 chapters six chapters contain stories and the other six contain prophecies but there is one chapter which has a prophecy in the first six and there is one chapter which has a story but basically you can cut the book in half okay so for example in uh, Daniel chapter 2 you see that the first part is actually a story and then towards the end from the middle to the end it contains prophecy okay and um, in Daniel chapter 10 okay it's also the same right you have um, a story but you also have prophetic meaning behind it but for the rest of the chapters some chapters are purely um, narrative stories and some chapters are just prophecy but in every chapter you will find prophetic meaning you will find uh, a lot of symbols that we need to uncover that we need to understand the meaning of okay and we need to understand Daniel to understand the prophecies in Revelation and that's why we always recommend you to study Daniel before you study the book of Revelation because Daniel is the key to unlocking the book of Revelation. And we need to understand Daniel to understand the prophecies in Revelation because um, it's actually a twin. Uh, they're twins, right? Daniel and Revelation. You cannot have one without the other. So as we study the book of Daniel, um, and as we go through the book of Daniel, you will find that the, the things in the book of Revelation will become clear to you as well. You'll be able to understand better the book of Revelation. It will become clearer and you will have a bigger picture. And of course, the most important thing about studying um, prophetic books is we need to understand um, that the main focus is Jesus. You know, many times when we study prophecy, we study these books, we can get so caught up with the symbols, the, the timeline, the dates, the events, that we miss out the big picture, which is what? Jesus, right? Jesus is the focus. This is what the book of Daniel is truly about. It's pointing us to Jesus, our Savior, um, our intercessor. It's showing us that, that Jesus is faithful. He will be there for us. He will be there um, to help us in our trials and our difficulties, right? So the focus is Jesus. We, we must not lose sight of that. Okay, so in every chapter, um, we will see that Jesus is always the main focus. And I want you to focus on that. Focus on how, um, you know, the chapter, this book makes Jesus relevant to your life. And, you know, when we, when we look at the book of Daniel, especially the stories um, like the, um, the fiery furnace, the lion's den. You know, many of us grew up, um, especially for um, the younger ones, right? We grew up 
um, listening to these stories when we were kids, right? As bedtime stories or during children's story, we always hear the stories of Daniel, okay? But the, these stories in the book of Daniel, they're not just bedtime stories, right? They're not. The stories, um, in some ways, they are more important than the prophecies. So as you are going through the book of Daniel, um, I don't want you to have that mind that uh, only those those chapters that have the dreams and, and the prophecies are important and the ones with the stories are not so important. No, they are equally, if not more important, right? Because that's where it becomes relevant. That's where it becomes applicable to your spiritual life, okay? And you see, prophecy, when we study prophecy, it will tell us what will take place in the future. Okay, it gives us an understanding of the events that will take place. It prepares us for, um, you yeah, know, it prepares us for the future. But when we look at the stories found in the book of Daniel, it will tell us how they will take place and how they will be fulfilled in the future. So as we look at the stories in the book of Daniel, okay, so like the lion's den, the, the burning furnace, it will give us the instruction to prepare ourselves, okay? So that's the personal application, how we can be faithful, how we can um, do, um, what steps we need to take to prepare ourselves for um, the end times, for the future events, okay? So that is um, the overview of the book of Daniel. And this concludes um, part one of the book of Daniel. Um, I mean, for the intro, and we will actually stop here and we will continue part two um, in the next session. Okay, so in part two, we will we'll talk about um, the purpose of prophecy and we'll go for, uh, deeper into um, the meaning of prophecy and why it's so relevant to us. Why do we need to study prophecy? We'll look at Jesus using prophecy and how we can apply that to studying the book of Daniel. Okay, so with that, um, we will close this uh, first session here. And if you have any questions so far, um, please just um, put it there in, in the Zoom chat. Or you can even WhatsApp to, uh, to Evelyn. Or, or if you, um, you have my number, you can WhatsApp me as well. And we will address those questions as we begin um, the next session. Okay, so please feel free to um, ask these questions and we'll pray here, we'll close and we will take a five, uh, sorry, a 10 minutes break and we will come back and continue with part two of the intro. Okay, so with that, let's close here with a word of prayer. Okay, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for this first session. Thank you so much for helping us to see the relevance of studying the book of Daniel. And I thank you for helping us to see that you are truly calling us to read and to understand. And Lord, we cannot understand without you. We cannot understand without the Holy Spirit. And so we are asking that you would give us spiritual discernment. We're asking for the Holy Spirit to be here to truly guide us and to truly help us as we unlock this book. So please, Lord, lead us and guide us. I pray that you would help us to truly understand, to truly apply the lessons found in this book. For we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.